What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. I'm Swiper Cam. Welcome to the channel. Y'all, let's go ahead and get it to 7,000 subscribers. Let's just go ahead and get it there. Hit the subscribe button. That means we are just about 3,100 subscribers away from getting to Serbia. Let's get to 10K soon. So, I just got done watching the Denver Nuggets playing against the Cleveland Cavaliers on October 25th, 2021. And the Denver Nuggets got shellacked. 99 to 87 and the score does not indicate how far away that game was and it started off like it ended yoke got banged on by lori marketing and everybody was like oh my gosh oh my goodness the timeline today went crazy y'all the whole game i'm watching people freak out online and on twitter again if you ain't following me on twitter follow me on twitter swipe a cam I'm telling you man it's a party every game and you know Y'all, it's the usual suspects, man. Let's just keep it 100. The offense didn't look good, again. Hasn't looked great, really, all season. They haven't scored over 110 points in the game yet. Yoke has been great and dominant, but hasn't had a lot of people come to the party yet this season. Porter's been missing shots. AG is playing decent, not hitting a bunch of shots. Will Barton's been playing well. Uh, didn't shoot great tonight. Monte Morris hasn't looked great. Has six assists. With two more turnovers tonight. But the story is the Nuggets get it all the way tied up. The 70 to 70. And the bench comes in and all of a sudden it's 73 to 89. Because the bench is trash right now. They have no creators. No real true spacing. Because all they're doing is a pick and roll to a pop to one of the greens. And hoping one of the greens is going to shoot 40% from three that day. But if they don't, like today, where you got Jermichael Green... 0-3 from the three-point line, and then Jeff Green, 0-3 from the three-point line. Yeah, that's your story right there. Once that happened, the momentum was gone. So all of a sudden, it went from 70-70, 75-70, and then 72-82. to Yeah, and it was a wrap. It was a wrap. Right now, the biggest issue is that the bench literally is one of the worst in basketball, one of the bottom three or four benches in basketball. Because it has no playmaking and scoring. Scoring. Facundo Campazzo, this season, today he had 3, 2, and 3 on 104 and 104 and on minus 11. Facu has been a liability. I'm just going to call it what it is. Facundo Campazzo has been a liability. He literally is not an offensive threat on the court. Every time he drives the basket, it's always going to be, I'm going to stay home on yoke. Or I'm going to let him do a pick and pop and hope that nothing else happens. Because he's not doing anything. He's not hitting his shots. His defense, he kept getting switched on to Kevin Love and other people today. Evan Mobley and was getting done. Roasted. He just He's just not good right now. Here's the problem. I got a Michael Porter Jr. video coming out on Wednesday, y'all. So I'll talk about that more in depth. Michael's not playing well right now. But the issue also is that Monte Morris isn't playing well because Monte Morris shouldn't be with the starters. Monte Morris should be with the bench unit. The problem is Michael Malone feels most comfortable with Monte Morris, and so he wants him to start at point guard. The problem is if he starts at point guard with the first unit, they really need spacing and scoring. Will Barton and Yoke can handle the two-man game, pick and roll, but... Monte Morris just doesn't seem to fit right now with what the starters are trying to do. So you couple that with the fact that Facundo Campazzo is not playing well. Look, man, I'm not saying that I'm definitely not saying Facu starts. My ideal solution would be to have PJ Zoger start in the starting lineup with Will Barton, Michael Porter Jr., and Aaron Gordon and Nikola Jokic. And then have Monte Morris, Bones Highland, Jeff Green, Jermichael Green, and whoever you want to put in that other slot. You can put Faku in there if you want. You can put Bobo in there sometimes. You can put Blacko Chanchar. We got Zeke Naji. Use him. Something. But it's not working. That bench unit is garbage. It's literally what's happening right now. It's the Nuggets is the starters. All right. Let's get a lead or play it as close to even as possible. And then hopefully by the time we come back in, we're not down more than six or eight points. And it's within re it's within reach by the time we get back in in the fourth quarter. Man, that's too much stress, man. 
There's too much stress. You don't need that. You don't need that for your bench. It doesn't make sense because that's too much pressure, especially if the offense and the starting unit hasn't figured out what they need to do yet. So, again, Malone is trying to find the rotation that works and get it time to get in sync. But through three games, we got three pretty solid sample sizes that is the worst part of the Nuggets team right now. Now, y'all, again, y'all, it's really not that big of a deal that they lost tonight. This is going to happen. Again, last, I'll remind y'all, they went 0-5 versus the D.C., versus Washington, D.C. last year, and versus the Sacramento Kings, 0-5. They already beat a bad team two days ago in the Spurs. So, again, it is what it is, man. Like, they're just not always going to have those games. Every team that plays against them is going to give them playoff atmosphere play. That's what it is. The Nuggets don't care about Cleveland. And, again, that's the part of the thing that Malone hates, but it's a part of his culture he's built, Tim Connolly, Yoke. They just don't always show up against lesser teams. They just don't do it. Supreme teams, they do. But in the playoffs, they always show up. But they just don't against worse teams sometimes. And also another thing, Nikola Jokic, y'all already know, I'm the biggest Nikola Jokic stan on this side of Twitter and on YouTube. But Yoke has had something he's done that's always frustrated me. When his teammates make mistakes consecutively, Yoke, he just is the type that he gets so frustrated that he sometimes stop, he disengages from his teammates on the court and will walk away. So tonight, prime example, he's been frustrated. Monte Morris tried to give him the entry pass. Again, you know the Nuggets struggle with entry passes outside of Jamal Murray, really. Monte Morris doesn't get it to him. He gets stolen. It goes out of bounds a foul or whatever, and Yoke, instead of helping Monte Morris up, just walks away. And that's one of my things with him, man. Like, he he, he gets a little pouty sometimes. And, again, a part of that, it, you grow out of it, and then you grow up, and then you move on. But a part of it is Yoke it just pouts with his body language sometimes. Like, yo, like, it'd be one thing if Yoke was perfect. Again, Yoke tonight had 24, 19, and 3, 9 of 15, 1 of 4, 5 of 6. Three steals, but six turnovers, back-to-back games with six turnovers. Honestly, he didn't play all that well. He had a nice little stretch, but he didn't play great. Here's the problem, though, is Yoke, he was getting burned inside because they just kept doing rim rolls at him. Or if, they, if Jared Allen got positioning, he was getting up for a layup. Because, how you know, again, Yoke struggles with the Clint Capellas, the Jared Allen, DeAndre Aydens in the paint because they're so tall and athletic. And he was getting roasted inside, and yet... When Monte Morris messes up, now it's like, oh, I can't even help him up. And again, y'all already know this ain't bag this ain't bagging on Yoke. It's just man, like, yo, man, it's part of basketball. It's something I wish he would clean up. Not a huge deal. And obviously his teammates don't care too much about it. The biggest issue with this team right now is Michael Porter Jr. is not involved in the offense. He's not. Michael Porter Jr., man, one of the best three point shooters ever, is three and nine from the three point line tonight, four fourteen from the field, only eleven points, five rebounds, and three assists. That means he has 33 points on three games to start this season off. Can't do it. Can't do it. He's literally the best player outside of Yoke. And on top of that, he just signed a max deal for five years, 172 to 207. He's not shooting as confident as he usually does. But nonetheless, they're going to have to integrate him. We're not talking about a lot of it tonight. Cause like I said, we got a video coming out on Wednesday. But, man, there's just so many things that need to be done to address that situation, which we'll talk about later. But it just wasn't great tonight. The Nuggets weren't great tonight. No one was great tonight. Bones Highland, he played well when he got in. Seven points, two rebounds, two assists. Three of five, one of three, one steal. Bones Highland was the only plus tonight. The Nuggets were a plus three with Bones Highland in the game tonight. He scored five points, I believe, with the starters. I'm starting Bones Highland or I'm starting P.J. Dozier with the starting unit. I'm not starting Faku. I don't need those problems. I'm starting Bones Highland or P.J. Dozier with the first unit and giving Monte Morris the responsibility of running the second unit because that's about where we're at right now. So, again, y'all, it's a frustrating loss. It's not great, but here's the great thing. The Nuggets go to Utah tomorrow. They go to Utah tomorrow at 2-1, and one, and they're playing against the Utah Jazz in a game that they can easily win tomorrow. And I, I mean, I don't mean easy because it's an easy matchup, but easy as in they can beat Utah tomorrow. But that's just how they are. They don't, sometimes they don't show up and get bad teams, but they'll come back tired with seven players only, and they'll come back and they'll beat a Utah because that's just how they're built. They show up when their back is against a wall, or better yet, 
they show up when they feel the most motivated to do so. And against Cleveland, they don't feel motivated to show up. Not consistently. It's just a part of their DNA. Again, it's frustrating. I know it doesn't sound great, but it is what it is. So not ideal. They're 2 and one now. Worst game of the year so far. Ugly showing. 22 turnovers. Their turnovers are outrageous this year. Now, again, y'all, that's going to slow down. That number will come down as the season gets on. It's just about, all right, learning how to play with each other. What's the tone and tenor for this year? Integrating new pieces, integrating the new offense, integrating Michael Porter Jr., learning how to exist outside of Nikola Jokic being the MVP every single night. Yoke not getting as frustrated with his teammates. It's going to take a while to process it all. It will get done. The real issue, though, the uh, the, fi- the thing that's most that's most frustrating and concerning that's not as fixable is the bench, because the Denver Nuggets bench is doesn't have any real true playmaking to the point of playmaking being score playmaker threat on the court at all time. Facundo Campazzo can play mate in the form of assist, but he is not a threat on every possession. You need someone who is threatening your defense all the time on the perimeter. That way, yo, Michael Green, Jeff Green, they're taking the bigs out. I'm, look, whoop, whoop, basket. Corner dump off to P.J. Dozier. Throw it back behind you to Jamichael or Jeff. You need those on your bench, and right now they don't have that because Faku literally is not a threat inside. So it's just causing so many issues. And this is my thing about Faku. Again, y'all, I've said this before. You don't want your 8th to 10th man being somebody you're having to make defensive adjustments with. Faku can't get switched on the big because he gets eaten alive. So, again, he has good plays, but he also has moments where it's like, bro, this is literally not working. So there's a lot of stuff they're going to fix tomorrow today. There's sh- yeah, man, it is what it is. I'm not really, I'm honestly not really tripping. Uh, the the Nuggets hold another team third game in a row. They hold another team underneath 100. I don't know if they've ever done that in the Malone era, three straight games to start the season under 100. So it is what it is. We'll get through it. We'll be back here tomorrow, you all. Swipe a game. We got it. Utah Jazz coming up.